We're going to talk about generosity uh, for about 20 to 30 minutes, maybe, 20, 25 minutes, uh, about being generous people, the greatest thing we could do with our lives. Jesus, uh, teach us this word. Teach us your life. And we give thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, you don't have to turn there, but just let me read one uh, passage of, of Scripture in Ecclesiastes. It's uh, from the New Living Translation. <clears throat> Ecclesiastes chapter 5, verse 16, it says, And this, too, is a very serious problem. People leave this world no better off than when they came. People leave this world no better off than when they came. You can read that two different ways, can't you? You, you can read it. Uh, somebody comes into the world, and then when they leave the world, they are no better off. They, they've not learned. They've not grown. They've not developed. They've not lived a life for the benefit of others. They've not been generous. They've not given their life away. They've, they've lived selfishly. They've lived the uh, Timothy passage where it says the last days, people will be lovers of themselves. They'll be selfish, proud, boasters, uh, arrogant. They'll be uh, you know, just lovers of themselves more than lovers of God. That's, that's a person who comes into this world and they're no better off than when they came into the world. The, when you look at that, that's a really strange statement because you come into the world as a baby. You don't know anything. You don't do anything. You don't help anybody. And then Ecclesiastes, Solomon saying, you leave the world the same way. You don't know anything, you don't do anything, you don't grow, you don't develop, you don't help anybody. Uh, so you live your life not for the bigger story, but you live your life for yourself. And you leave the world, you're no better off than when you started. Second way you could look at it is you leave the world, and when, the, and when you leave, the world is no better off. You've not left the world in a better place. Your life has not been meaningful in a significant way to change the environment around you, where you live, where you serve, where you work your family, your friends, your community, your church, your, <clears throat> just, just you, can, you, can you imagine that? Living a life that when you leave here that nothing around you is any better off than when, than when, you, when you came into it. Um, I had this picture of uh, people, it, it's not a biblical picture, it's just one that's sort of in my own imagination, so don't t take it as theology, um, but, but standing before the Lord on Judgment Day, and, and instead of him saying, like, you did this wrong, or, oh, you did this right, come into heaven, he actually shows you a picture uh, of, of, of your life, like, this is what I meant for you to be. Look at your character, look at your conduct, look at your love, look at your passion, look at your, look at your calling, look at your destiny, look at the fruitfulness of your life, look at the victories you won, look at the battles you fought and, and defeated the enemies, look at the benefit you brought to the world. This is you, this is the design I had for your life, this is the plans I have for you, plans to bless you and prosper you, this is the plans I have for you, but then, but this is your life. And that's, to me, that's a picture almost of the judgment. It's like, oh, wow, I could have been that, I could have done that, I could have achieved that, I could have blessed that person, I could have made a difference there, I could have lived a really meaningful, significant life, but here was my life. I'm no better off than when I came into it, and the people around me, the world around me, is no better off than when I came into it. I didn't leave the world in a better place. Being judged for uh, not being all that you were meant to be. And I think there's something inside of us. I think we're working at a ministry like this because there's something inside of us that we would prefer this. I think 99.9% .9 of you would say, I would prefer this to working at even a other good job, maybe even a more well-paying job, maybe a bank executive or... Uh, you know, something like that, or my own business, but I want to work here because I want that thing that Solomon was talking about there. I want to leave the world in a better place, and I feel like I could do it here. By the way, everybody here is doing that. Um, even if you feel like, well, I'm, I'm doing this, and that's not out on the field. No, that's, don't listen to that lie. That's, that's the enemy. There's no, there's no position here that is benefiting and impacting the world more than the other because we are all in this together, and so remember that because the enemy will try to, to rob that from you and then you'll get discouraged and you'll feel like you'll hear a scripture like that and you'll start re, uh, replaying in your own mind like I'm not leaving the world in a better place I'm just going to work at nine o'clock and then I leave at five o'clock and I'm not doing anything no you're doing something of great value you are part of an organization and a community and a ministry that is living for the benefit of others and making a huge impact uh, around the world and so so we want to be people that live a life, something, uh, something bigger than ourselves. Um, us being a better person, self-growth, us making the world a better place, growing others, helping stretch others. So, so you don't have to raise your hand, but everybody in this room wants to live a life where you go like, it was huge, it was amazing, it was delightful, it was passionate, it was zealous, it was life-changing, it, it left a trail of people's lives being 
rather than ruined, rescued, and developed, and strengthened, and blessed, and encouraged. And so you want to leave that. You want to live for something bigger than yourself, right? The single most important element, the single most vital truth that you will ever find about living a life of meaning, significance, passion, and purpose is this one word that I'm talking about here this morning, is generosity. It may not seem like it. You may think, well, there's other things that are more important than that. But when it comes to leaving an impact on the world, nothing impacts the world more than generosity. Giving is, 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 is the core of the gospel. For God so loved, so love is the emotion or the feeling that he gave. Giving is, is, the, is the core of his action. Uh, the act of God at his core is one who gives, which is the root word for generosity. So at the core of the gospel is generosity. He could have just loved, but unless he gave, then we would have known of the love. So you could say, I love the world, or I, w- I love making the world a better place, or I, I love living larger than my own little story. I, I want a bigger story in my life. You, you might say that, I love that, but unless we give, then our love is not truly love, as Paul says in 1 Corinthians 13. It's a gonging, it's a symbol, it's, a, it's brass, it's, it's a bunch of noise that has no real life or impact. And so I feel a lot of love for a lot of people, but I am, I am less generous to, to, to other people. I'm less generous when I'm upset. I'm less generous when I'm cranky. I'm less generous when I'm tired. I'm less generous when I feel like I haven't been served well. And so I, I want my life to shift. I hope you do too, to be generous no matter how I feel, to give no matter how I, t- to, and to demonstrate my love uh, by actions, by, by doing something. Now when we think of generosity, do, how many of our minds, raise your hand if you feel this way, your mind usually goes towards money. Anybody here? When I think of generosity, I think of, uh, you know, I got $100, I'll give 20 of it away. I, I've got, I need to tie, that's being generous, or give to this mission, that's generosity. I think money is one of the lesser forms of generosity. The, 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 one of the lesser important, it's very important. But I think, I think most people, particularly in America, have, uh, have, 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 have enough money, but they don't have enough love. They have enough money, but they don't have enough attention, somebody giving them attention. They, they have enough money, but they don't have enough of somebody caring and, and, and sharing and, and imparting time and energy into their life. And so generosity to me is, 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 is more giving your life away to somebody than it is your money. The money will be a small part of that as, as you care for somebody and holistically you'll say, hey, you know, I can help you with this. But I think the need here in America, you, know, they, you, can, you can go to the welfare office and get money without getting love affection, attention, wisdom, insight, revelation. So it's giving yourself away. I'm going to talk real briefly about three different ways I think we can give ourselves away that, that, are, that are super important for us, and it'll change your life if we just start practicing these three little elements. Uh, the first one is intention. Uh, be intentional about generosity. Don't wait for the emotion to attach. You know you were created, spirit, soul, and body. The soul is your mind, your emotions, and your will. And so if, if one of those is out of, out of kilter, uh, you're going to be functioning on less than all power, less than all cylinders, so to speak. Does that make sense? Um, so I'll use an example. So if, you're, if your mind says, well, the Bible tells me to give, to be generous. So I'm going to give some money, but I'm also going to take this person out to lunch and just ask them about their life. And I'm going to be generous with my time by loving on somebody. Uh, so your mind says, that's a good thing. But your emotion says, I'd really rather, you know, just take a, a nap during my lunch hour. So your emotions is in one direction and your mind's a different direction. And First, Corinthians, First Thessalonians 5 says your whole spirit, soul, and body, the holistically coming into with full passion. So your mind and your emotions have to be equal. They, 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 they both have to be engaged in generosity. And some of us emotionally feel like we're going to be very generous, right? I'm going to be very generous. I'm going to, I'm going to write a check to that ministry. Uh, but then our emotions kick in. But I really want a, a new set of clothes. You know? And so the, 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 the emotion will say yes, and the mind will say no, or vice versa. The mind will say, I'm supposed to give because the Bible tells me to, but I don't want to. And so the emotions. Are... So to, how do you get your emotions to match? Because I think everybody here, you're, in your mind, you're saying, I'm supposed to be generous. But a lot of us aren't at all, you know, just to be honest, right? We're not always as generous as we want to be or living that life for the benefit of others as we could be. So how do we get our emotions to match that? I believe it's by value. Um, so it, uh, I've been trying to lose a little bit of weight, and, and part of the things that's helped me is a, is a big transition in my emotions. 
uh, so let me ask this question. If, if I said, I want to lose 20 pounds, uh, and that's the what, that's what I want to do, but unless I have, that's my mind, my mind tells me I want to lose 20 pounds, but unless I attach in my soul my emotions to my mind, I'm going to be weak when it comes to a temptation. That Krispy Kreme donut will be more emotionally attractive than, and if my emotional reason for losing weight is, let's just, let's just say, uh, okay, uh, my belt is, is not tight enough, I can't tighten my belt anymore. If I don't lose weight, I'm gonna have to go buy a new belt. That's 30 bucks, I don't wanna spend 30 bucks. How many of you think that's strong enough emotionally, an emotional pull to keep me from Krispy Kreme? It, there's no emotional pull to it, so it's, I'm, I'm only functioning in my mind. My mind says lose weight, but my emotions say, forget about it, Krispy Kreme's better than Pay the 30 bucks, pay 50 bucks for a belt, $100 for a belt, but get the dang Krispy Kremes in your mouth. <laughs> and, so, um, and so the emotion has to be in that as well. So when it comes to generosity, uh, we have to be intentional about it. Uh, but, and so for me, losing weight, when I started seeing, uh, for me, it became sitting down on the floor. When my grandkids were all around saying, Papa, play, play with us. And I went like, oh, you ever do that? Oh, get in. And then like, oh my goodness, that's like, and then you get down on the floor and you're like, you put your lean, you're lean up against the couch and you go like, <laughs> you know, and the kids are like, Papa, play with me. And it's like, no, I don't, I, I. and so for me, that all of a sudden I, t I attached that emotion to my mind. I said, I, I want to lose weight, but now I have a reason for it. Like, you know, when I was younger, it was like, it was for this girl here. It was like, <laughs> Uh, you know, I don't, I don't want to, you know, if a doctor says you're, you're, heart, you're hardening your, your arteries and you go like, well, you know, that's, that's you know, it's like, I, I don't really care. But if you care about something, I want to walk her down the aisle and, and be there to say, who gives this woman to be married to this man? I want to do that. So that's an emotion. And so when it comes to generosity, you have to have that. The mind says yes. It says this is of God but then your heart has to be attached to that. Well, why? why? So ask yourself the question, why do you want to be generous? And I'm not going to answer it for you, but I want you to take some time today, if you would, take five, ten minutes. I give you permission to uh, step aside from your desk and go into the little room or come out here and, and just take ten minutes and just ask yourself, because why, would, why would I want to be generous? What's, what's my purpose in being generous? And what emotions do I have towards it? And so, be, so being uh, intentional about thinking it through, um, and then move from, from thinking to conviction. Once, once your mind and your soul, your soul, your soul is fully engaged, your mind, your emotions, and then, you're, then you can kick your will in, right? Your will always obeys your mind and your emotions. So if you're, if you're having trouble with willpower, uh, about like being intentionally generous, like I am going to be generous today, I'm going to live a generous life day by day by day, every day of my life, and you're having a struggle with that, then, then, then you say, okay, that's, the, the will is out of whack. Why is the will out of whack? Either the mind or the emotions or the, 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 the marrying of those two things together to make me strong enough to be able to have the capacity to do what I, I want to do when it comes to uh, living a generous life. So be, in, be, in, in, uh, be in, intentional about it. Um, study your own heart. Look at own, your own ways to do that. Um, I would also say be intentional about choosing the uh, person of your generosity. Um, normally we wait for a generous moment to come to us. Does that make sense? What, what I'm advocating is, is we become initiators of generosity. We're not waiting for somebody to come say, uh, you know, hey, I really need your help. Can you do this for me? But we're looking for opportunities. How can I serve? What can I do for you today? Is there anything I can do to, to bless you, to encourage you? Also be intentional about not just what you do, but who you do it for. Um, you're looking for people. You're, Jesus d d didn't, didn't wait for five or six guys to come up and say, hey, I would really like to learn from you. Can I be your disciple? He didn't wait for eight or 10 or 12. He, he actually chose 12 people and said, I'm going to invest in you. And, and so, so be intentional about it. Actually choose somebody and say, that's a person I'm going to practice generosity on for days, weeks, months, years to come. They're, they're going to be a um, an agent. Uh, they're going to be a, I wanted to say victim, that's not the right word. <laughs> uh, they're going to be someone that re is a recipient of my generosity. So you be in, in, intentional. Um, after beginning intentional, uh, let me just, what was the second one? Um, intention and then attention to give attention to people. So you're intentional about it, and then you give attention 
So you actually have to do something. You can't just, as I said earlier, you, love has to have the, 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 the give to it. And so uh, you pay attention to who's in need. You pay attention to your own heart. Are you going to be a giver? And then, the, the, and then you're paying attention to that person. Does that make sense? You're, 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 you're like, uh, so it, it, would, it would be time would be one thing. You give them, if you're not just going to give them money, well, what's, what's more important? I'd say time, time, uh, 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 attention, um, especially in a culture where the cell phone is always out in front of us or on the t table when you're eating. Can I give you a real practical thing? Can we as a team of people make a commitment to never put your phone on the table when you're having a lunch with somebody, or having a meal with them? Keep it in your pocket, keep it in your purse. Uh, and please, for the Lord's sake, don't be on your phone when you're with a group of people. Uh, be, be, so pay attention to them. To, to, so you're intentional about it, but you're giving attention to people. You're giving them your time, um, and, you're, and, then, and, then you're, and, then, and then you're giving them your trust. You're talking to them. You're giving your time. There's three T's, time, trust, and talk. You're spending time with them. You're trusting them. Your phone's out in the middle of <laughs> Great timing. Speaking of, speaking, speaking of timing, this one, set the timer. This. Uh, uh, so the, then lastly um, is action. Actually, so you've got to take action. You, be, be intentional about but the intention is something you, you intend to do it, but then there has to be the carrying out of doing it, the, the action. So, um, so, so here's, here's a couple quick things. We'll close with this. Um, if you're taking notes, please write this down because I, I, I want you to do these things. I don't want just this to be another informational talk. We have too much information, and, and we don't want to just add more information. Uh, and then we don't want to just add this to our list of things we're supposed to do because we're Christians. Uh, um, I'm going to give you a few closing points that if you'll do this, it'll be, you'll go like, oh, this is going to help me. I have so long to live a generous life. I have so long to live a life meaningful and significant, a life for others. Uh, and you've handed me, Gary, some tools today to help me do that. And so uh, this is my call to action. This is my call to say, l l let's get this done. Number one, I want you to write down three names of people uh, that you feel are like hungry um, for, because when I say hungry like they, 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 they're, they're like a sponge like because we're, again we're not talking about just giving somebody money we're talking about giving something you have the greater form of generosity is sharing your life your time giving your attention to people and so sharing that life so so who would you like to share with and I would choose three people not like you know, you know, just somebody, when I say hungry, do you know what I mean? In the sense of like they, they want more out of life. They, they could use your heart. They could use your mind. Somebody, almost like being a mentor to them. Like who would be a good mentee, if that's the right word? You know, that in the sense of they, they, would, they would absorb the wisdom that you have, the convictions that you have. Um, backing up just a little bit, I, I missed one of my points I wanted to share with you was um, unless you grow, when we talked about like, Le you leave the world in a better place and when you leave here <clears throat> you're better off unless you're growing you don't have anything to share with people you, you can have somebody you want to give your heart your attention your your love towards but unless you're growing in love and growing in wisdom and growing in in uh, strength then, then what do you have to give people so you got to grow yourself once you do you look for people who are ready to grow they're like hungry to grow and, and you and then you be intentional about it so you write the, write the three name, names down um, Secondly, then I would say, uh, uh, find a place and a time to meet with them. Organize it. And I want to encourage you, here, here's my call to action. Within the next 10 days, uh, plan on meeting with, at least with one, hopefully two of these people. And if you really have time and energy, all three people over the next 10 days, a lunch, a breakfast, a walk through the park. Um, and you don't have to tell them, like, I am intentionally here to be generous of my heart and my wisdom with you, but, but, the same, but you are looking to accomplish something. It's, a, it's an intentional, purposeful relationship. It's not like, I just want to go for a walk with a friend. It is, it is you have, you have a, there's a, there's a, there's a purpose, it's, it's purpose-driven generosity, to borrow something from Rick Warren, purpose-driven generosity. You're driven uh, on purpose to be a generous person. The recipient of that generosity has to be chosen intentionally by you, and you have to take action to do something. So write their names down, give them a call, choose a time and a place, um, and then sit down with them. And, 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 and when you do, three quick things. Number one is ask them questions. Uh, we, we live in a society today that's just really awful at asking questions. Usually it's like when two people are sitting together over a meal, 
This one person says, I did this, and I'm doing this, and I'm going here. And this person says, yeah, I'm doing this, I'm doing it. And it's like, oh, you could have just looked in the mirror and talked to yourself because you were just reporting your own stuff. This one wasn't listening, wait, waiting just to say, well, here's what I want to say about my life. And, and, and we all want to be heard, but very few of us want to listen. And so ask a lot of questions. Um, and and uh, if you're going to be intentional about generosity, I would just suggest you even uh, have some questions in mind before you go to meet with the person. Um, just, just think of some things beyond how you're doing, because you'll get a fine, and then what do you, now what do you want to order off the menu is the next question. And so, so have some questions in, in, in mind. What, you know, uh, I was with uh, Jerry Nance, who's director of Global Teen Challenge, and he tells me he spent some time with Ken Blanchard, wrote the book, uh, I think it's called Three Minute Manager or whatever. And he said, Ken is, the most genius thing he ever does is when he's in a group of people or when he's alone with you, he's always, he is just one, like a, like a shotgun. Okay, there's four of us at the table here. Uh, we were just at a conference. What was the most important thing you heard at the conference today? Okay, why was that important to you? Well, why was this important to you and not that? Because the, 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 talk, the speech was about this and you're bringing up that. Why, is, why did you get that out of it? What's, what's happening in your life that, that you got that? And so, and you can't do that without being curious. And so I, putting the two together, you can't be generous unless you're curious. And so you have to be curious. You can't be curious about people's lives unless you love people. And so it all comes down to, again, back to, to love and then give. What was first? It didn't say God so gave the world that he loved us. You know, he, he, he loved first, and out of that comes the giving. And so loving people. So, <clears throat> so uh, ask, and then listen. Uh, make sure you're listening to them, not thinking about the next question, not thinking about what you're going to say next, not thinking about your response to them, not thinking about what makes me sound good or smart. Just, just really listening. Um, and, and, and that could form your next question. So you're developing a, a real relationship. A lot of people are really desperate for a true relationship. And, and we as Christians and as in a ministry, we can say we're in the ministry because we go to Africa or Israel. But actually, are we in the ministry everywhere we go at all times? And so we're listening to people. And lastly, um, have a, 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 you, know, you have a vision for your ministry, right? You have a vision for your career. You have a vision. But, but how, I would say for these three people, cre create a God-given vision for them. Remember what I said earlier, like we stand at Judgment Day and God says, here's, here's my design for your life. You were meant to write and you never did. You were meant to sing and you never did. You were meant to serve the poor and you decided to go this way. You were meant to be uh, you know, uh, uh, an entrepreneur and to get this company and you never did. And so, so, so I would encourage you to kind of try to picture yourself seeing what God sees in that other person and, and, and see... Uh, see, and see the best. This takes a little training because a lot of us are used to seeing critically what's wrong with the other person rather than what could be in the other person. We tend to criticize people, judge people. There's so much insecurity in the world. It's born out of, I don't feel too good about myself, so I'll try to knock other people down. And so building other people up is, is a gift from God that, that, that says, okay, my building other people up is to have a vision of them. I'm not just saying random things like, oh, you look nice today, or you're so funny you know you're actually looking at like well, what what are your qualities what what are you what are your areas if you would just be nudged a little bit what do I hear you saying that is the desires of your heart but you're I see fear in you uh, how can we how can we rid you of that fear and bring and so you have a vision for them and um, I, I would even suggest you take a moment to like uh, maybe a paragraph or two and actually write a vision out for that person so so maybe you're thinking of you know you're uh, your next door neighbor, you, you had a good relationship with them, but it's not just going to the next level. So you, you, you pick them and you say, okay, have, I'm going to intentionally have a meal with them, listen, ask questions, but then start forming a vision for them. And then the next time you meet, again, you're not going to sit there and read the vision to them and saying, like, here's my vision for you. It's two paragraphs and put it on your refrigerator, please. Um, it's it's, it's going to be it's going to be through sharing, through nudges, through stories, through listening, through asking questions about you know, like I have a friend who <clears throat> wanted to write a book, and um, it's been three years now, and she hasn't. And you know, when I'm with her, occasionally nudge her, like, like, how's the writing going? Let's without condemnation or guilt, and you know, it's like, is that still a passion? Like, and then a little thought, like, well, why don't you just write, like, make a commitment to write, uh, uh, you know, one page every three days, 
and you know, and so you, know, you start seeing some successes. So you're that, that's 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 a great way to live your life because <clears throat> you become an encouragement to others. But so many of Proverbs says this is like the uh, when a wealthy man gives of his generosity, he becomes more wealthy. Uh, and that's talking about money, but the same thing's true with this kind of generosity of sharing. When somebody shares their life with others, you become somebody who a lot of people share their life with you. Uh, you become like a magnet for people who want to mentor you and speak into your life. And uh, you, you, this is going to—you may think this is odd, but it's, it's just—it's it's God's economy. You start sharing your life with somebody that needs. Maybe you're a little bit further down the road with with wisdom and and kind of life uh, life capacity. You start sharing with them, and God's going to send you somebody. I don't want to say bigger, but or greater, but somebody who's further down the road than you. Uh, with, with greater skill, greater wisdom, greater insight, uh, greater ability to help create a vision in your life and see it become a reality. It'll be pressed down, shaken over, abundantly overflowing. Give, give, who's, who gets that kind of pressed down, shaken? The one who's generous, the one who gives. So I want to encourage you, if you have any intention or desire or passion of living a life that's more than your own, more than your own self-interest, if you want to live for something bigger than yourself, then yes, it's going to be the mission that we're on as a, or, as a, as a community of believers, but it's also going to be our daily life out there just like looking at how we love people and then we give ourselves to them. So, did you, did you, did you, so you're going to think of the three? And then what are you going to do after you think of the three? Contact them, make a plan, organize the time to be with them, and then you're going to sit down with them and... Write a life. Write a life. <laughs> Very good. You sound so passionate about it. Ask, ask questions, and, and listen. Yeah, so yes, listen, listen first. If you start writing the vision before you've asked questions or listened, you probably have an, what's called an agenda. It's like you want, you want them to become something that you have a desire rather than seeing God's intended desire for them. It's a great way to live. I'm just scratching the surface of it. But when I, when I, when I hit on it occasionally, it's just like, yeah, that... That was a really good day. How many of you like having good days? How many, you like, how many of you like to put good days back to back to back? Not days of drudgery, not days of misery, not days of boredom, not days of what do you want to do tonight? Let's watch, let's binge watch, you know, something new show or something. Let's, let's have, this, is, this makes your life significant. And at the end of it, you'll be able to say, I left the world a better place. I became a better person and I left the world a better place. I'm more generous and the world has had somebody give to it the things that it needed. So, Father, I pray for my friends in this room. Thank you. I pray that something I did today was a, a, a little bit of generosity of giving some of the things that you've been sharing with me. And I, and I pray that, that it would have impact. My vision, obviously, right now, without oh, listening to what I said myself, but I haven't listened to them, but I, am, I do have a vision, God, that they would become, we would become a generous people, that we would, that, that, uh, Father, you would like seal this word in like concrete in our minds and in our emotions, that we'd be emotionally attracted to living a generous life and that our minds would be made up so that our will would be uh, iron. This would be a conviction. It wouldn't just be a sentiment. It would be a conviction. We will be generous. We will live radically uh, in a radical generosity. We are going to choose ways that are going to surprise even ourselves. We're going to be like, that was crazy. I can't believe I did that. I can't believe I gave that away, or I can't believe I planned that, or I can't believe I gave up this to do that. But Lord, you're going to surprise us as we get the joy of surprising others. Let it be a delightful walk, a great journey, and, and the outcome is, is that we'll feel like uh, more aligned to your purposes. That, that's, this is part of, uh, we know from Scripture, this is part of your uh, design over us. When, when we stand before you one day, part of the design and tension that you had for us was be that we would have been generous and so help us to measure up to the fullness of the measure that's in Christ Jesus when it comes to generosity. We thank you that you laid down your life for us as an example as Philippians says and um, we, we in turn just want to learn to do that. Um, we're slow, we repent of our, our lack and, our, and I repent of my inability to do that, of, of the selfishness that's so uh, uh, Contain, so uh, contained in my, just in my very fabric of my DNA, but you're removing it. You put a new heart in me and in us, and that heart is, is the heart of Jesus. And we thank you that this, is, this message is not just going to be information, but Lord, it's, it's speaking to our heart. 
uh, because our heart is, is new, our heart is soft, our heart is not a heart of stone but of flesh. And it's moved by your word, and your word tells us and, and then compels us and empowers us to be generous. So we thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen.